And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Autodots and Cavemen Playing by Fire. This is one of three games about the Autonauts. They're basically, for this game company, the Autonauts, uh, where they are essentially little funny aliens who came to Earth and basically just play games. In this one, for some reason, they want to smother their opponent's fire. Um, so these are cavemen, Odonauts, and it's a two-player game. This one's a two-player game uh, in which you will be putting your cards face down and trying to outsmart your opponent. Let me show you how it plays. All right, here's how the game is set up. Each player has three fires and caves in front of them. Players will then get a deck of cards. These cards include more caves and different characters that have weird names, the little Aldenaut characters in the caveman times. One player goes first and on your turn, first you can move your folks on the board. There's no one here to move. Then you can place up to three more on the board. When you place new ones on the board, you place them between the, or next to a cave on the board. When you play caves, let's say the blue player plays a cave, you can replace the red caves so that you have, not only do you stop your opponent from placing stuff next to them, but you can also move your own guys up into these areas. Now, when moving someone on the board, you can attack somebody instead of moving one. And by the way, when you move, you can move like this. You can't move diagonally, but you can also jump over caves like this. But I can tap him, say I'm attacking him. I show I'm gritty and he's gutsy. That's a three and a five. Uh, three is a higher rank than the five, so the three would win, and five goes to the inactive pile. By the way, you'll notice that Gutsy here has a special ability of being able to move two instead of one. So, many times characters are sent to the, the pile. Now, there are a couple characters that, are, that help with this inactive pile. One of those is Zippy. Zippy is kind of a loser. Anybody can beat him, although he has a special ability to jump over cards. And then Ballsy is the best character in your army. If either one of these is killed by your opponent, then all your inactive cards that have been killed get shuffled back or get shuffled back into your draw pile. So you can send Zippy up and he can keep getting killed and keeps bringing your pile back. Now, if you make Zippy die for whatever reason, that doesn't work. And Zippy is the only person who can beat Ballsy. That's why he has the Ballsy icon there. So if he beats Ballsy, then that Ballsy bringing back the cards also does not work. You say, well, how can Ballsy die if he's the highest one? Well, you can have mutual destruction, I guess, between two of them. Also, there's a dino character. When he eat, meets somebody, he automatically eats them, and then they both disappear. The dinosaur grabs his lunch and runs away. All the rest of the characters are simply special numbers, although a few of them, Plucky and Gutsy, can move two spaces when moving. You keep doing this until you attack your opponent's fires. When you put your opponent's fires, when three of them are put out, then you win. Uh, and so you'll play back and forth, and eventually somebody will do that because they, you won't be able to draw cards anymore for some other reason, or you just get in there and attack them. You can also play a variant of the game where uh, all the cards are open. And Odonauts Cavemen playing with fire. Not a very good game. I'm going to start out by saying that's unfortunate. I like the artwork. I like the idea. The problem is this idea has been done in a very popular game that people have played for a very long time called Stratego. Stratego is superior to this in so many different ways. And there are, you know, said, well, but yeah, this is a card game version. Well, yes, there are other games that did that. The best, by far, is Hera and Zeus. And those games take this idea and really do something cool with it. This game is just downright boring. Put guys down, try to outsmart your opponent. You have people who move too. If you move someone who moves too, I wonder what they are. Oh, but it might be the five instead of the four instead of the five. Well, big deal. It's just kind of a very ho-hum experience. This game has the problem of being sleep-inducing. That was the, my thing with it. It was like, oh, yeah, oh, someone won. Yay, and it was over. The special abilities and the characters are cool, but there's not that many, and they're not very unique and interesting. And they stole the thing from, you know, Stratego, where the spy can kill the general, but anybody can kill the spy. The same thing here. Zippy can kill Ballsy, but anyone else can kill Zippy. I guess if you think it's funny to say Zippy and Sluggy and Ballsy, and you like the artwork, this would have an idea. But ah, I just felt like this game was just so boring. 
you play some cards, you move some people, your opponent does it, oh, you killed me, da, da, da. oh, look, I get my cards back, let's do it again, let's go, let's con continue, and you do the twist over and over and over, and finally someone puts out the fires and you win. But it never felt like, ah, ha, ha, I got you. I never had any of those moments in this game. So this is my least favorite of the three alternate games. It's just that the theme is okay, the, the artwork is good, the game is derivative and numbing. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.